Uh, hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now if you watched the recent video that we made about JSON mode and scraping, I thought in this video what we would do is we would make the universal scraper, which to be honest with you, if we can do it in this amount of time, I'll actually just put it in the description for you guys. But I want to also show you how I make these things so that if you want to, you can make it yourselves. Now one of the first things you need to know is that Claude does not have knowledge of JSON mode. So if you say to it, uh, just out of the box, create me a script that does this, it's not gonna work. Harbor, in my opinion, has the best keyword tool on the market right now. Instead of you having to spend years and years becoming an SEO expert, we just give you the results out of the box. Try it today, harborseo.ai, using the code half price. So we're gonna be using Gina and we're gonna be using OpenAI to do this, okay? So basically here we have um, the page, I just went on Google typed in OpenAI JSON mode. Uh, we either have the docs here or we have uh, the guide here as well. Um, but yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just change this to Python, it's already on Python. And then we're gonna grab a load of this here and I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put it in Claude. And then with Gina, the really cool thing about Gina is they actually did this uh, recently. If you press integrate on Gina's homepage and then copy full prompt and then just paste that, what it's gonna do is it, it actually gives you this prompt that basically summarizes everything that Gina does, okay? So we don't actually need to find anything because it, it already exists, okay? so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I want to make a universal scraper using GPT, using the model, GPT 4.0 mini. Please use this exact model, even if you don't think it exists. I promise you it does. The reason I'm saying that, trust me, just you need to be very specific with this shit because it just doesn't understand it. The way, this works is as follows. Use a standard r.gina search on a URL. URLs will be supplied by me inside urls.csv. Uh, this will return an LLM friendly response. Uh, which will include links and images and all of the information on that page, but not as Markdown or HTML, but as LLM friendly text. Then we will use JSON mode with GPT-40 mini, which exists, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and you should write uh, the prompt including all of the J of the JSON objects that you would expect to extract from a web page. Um, let's start with an e-commerce example. So some things I'd like to extract uh, are, and then in brackets put these in the um, prompt not inside, not using code itself, but inside the OpenAI prompt. Also, wait, I'm just gonna put up here, uh, use a .m file for my Gina API key and OpenAI API key. So I put these inside the prompt, not in the cursor, but inside the OpenAI prompt. Uh, some examples would be uh, images, no, uh, uh, main image, uh, secondary images, um, description, key information, specifications, etc. Give me as detailed um, prompts and JSON objects as possible as we're wanting to scrape as much information from each page as we can. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna do a very simple example of scraping a product page and scraping all of the information from that product page. 
There are other things that you would want to add to this. So for example, you would scrape a category page for all of the, uh, all of the individual product links, links, and then you would scrape each individual product link. But I'm just gonna keep it simple for the non-technical people so that you can understand how this stuff actually works. So all I've done so far is give it two documentations and a prompt, okay? So there's nothing technical here. It's just, well, I mean, I say there's nothing technical here. <laughs> there's a hell of a lot of technical information in that prompt, but it's, it's just, it's, it's language. I'm just using language, okay? So let's just uh, hit enter here. And I'll know straight away if this is correct or not. Okay, looks pretty good so far. So yeah, this is the schema here. So let's just have a quick look. So we've got type, properties, product info, um, properties, title, brand, main image URL, second URL, blah, 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 price, availability, technical details, etc. Now, is that putting it inside a prompt? That's the important thing. I need it to be inside a prompt. So we'll see here, it should, if I'm not mistaken, be, yeah, so you obviously cannot read. Oh, wait. Can it read? I need the JSON object inside the prompt itself, not as a separate entity. Have you done that? Or oh, um, I miss, understand. Classic Claude there, absolutely classic. Where's the model here? What model were you using? GPT-4 a mini, okay, thank God for that. Let's just say, uh, write out the entire script, put the JSON object in the user not in the system prompt um and what else do i we just want to change quickly uh, i mean all, all of this seems fine that's just the only thing i'd want to change i guess oh i forgot to say and then store it inside mongodb obviously so we'll just go to mongo here i love mongo it's such a such a good system mongo honestly guys uh so we'll press uh do we press connect it um let's go yeah connect um, and then compass, for example, and then we'll copy this here. Um, and then I'll say, I also want you to store this inside my Mongo DB inside a new collection with a new name. This is my Mongo URI. I will, uh, please add it to the, uh, dime file. I will add my password in a moment. So this should, if I'm not mistaken, this should create something that will actually store the JSON object inside um, Mongo. And you, d you do need this because you don't really want to scrape to a CSV because it just gets complicated and, and just, yeah, it's just complicated. It's much better to store this in a database. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Where do I add the URL I'm scraping? Okay, so while that's doing that, let's open up Visual Studio Code here. File, open folder. Right click here, new, please ignore my file names. Right click here, hi.py, you know, you guys know the drill. We'll also add .env, save this. This actually looks pretty decent already, to be honest with you. Um, so I need to create a urls.csv as well, so urls.csv. Go to two men, we'll grab a random product here. Actually, that would have worked. Um, we'll just grab this product here. Copy this, put this inside urls.csv. Start filling out the .env. Sorry if I'm going too quick, guys, but you can slow me down. Just click on the, just change the playback speed of this video. Save this. So I'm just going to fill in my username and my password for the database, which you can, you have to make that in the user section or on the quick start section of Mongo. I'll show you that in a second once I've just set these variables. Let me just get my API keys. Okay, so I've set those environment variables. If you just wanna, if you wanna do this for yourselves, if you just click on the bottom left here on security, just set yourself a username and password here and then press create user and then you actually, oh my God, classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the password, by the way, guys. It, it's, it has a password, it's, that's not the password. Anyway, I don't think it would really matter if anyone got on this database, but anyway. We now have set the URLs. We've set the URI um, of my Mongo database. Um, I think, to be honest with you, if we just go terminal, new terminal, and then python hi.py, uh, let's see, it looks like there's no, looks like there's an error there, so we'll just send this error here. So this is a process. This is where AI 
uh, you have to be patient. It's not going to get it right first time ever, okay? It just will not happen. So you have to just do things over and over and over. Sorry, guys. Uh, I forgot to delete the your API key here on the in, inside the M. So actually, it might have got it right first time. I apologize to Claude. Let's see. Come on. There's no way this actually fucking does this first time. No way. I was so impressed because this took me hours the other night. No way. Look at that. So scrape data.json. We now have all of this information here. You can see. Now, obviously, not all of it's been filled in. There's quite a lot of null here, as you can see. But we have the images, which you can see. This is the polo. This is the main image. It has the title, the brand, the SKU, the price, the original price. So it looks like there's no offer on this. Yeah, of course there isn't because this is from FW 2025. So it's a brand new product. So there wouldn't be a discount. It says it's out of stock, which is uh, not correct. It's not out of stock, but that's fine. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect uh, straight away because it's using GPT-4 and Mini. So what I would do in this case is I would just delete this JSON object from the prompt because it's obviously not working properly. So I just delete that. Product content, we have short description, and then we have full description, which goes on. Beautiful. Key features, 100% premium cotton. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then it hasn't seemed to have found any other information, but we've already done this. So this is actually pretty much done. I was not expecting it to be that quick. So let's just go to overview here and we'll go to cluster. Uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, browse collections. And then it should be stored somewhere here. So it should be under product data. Is it stored it here? Did I just see it here? Oh, it's here. Yeah, it's here. This is it. So, um, yeah, there we go. It's, <laughs> it's stored in the database. How cool is that, guys? So now, and obviously, you can you can mess around with the prompts, okay? So, so for example, it hasn't come up with um, so length. It, ha it does actually have the length here. So yeah, again, you you can mess around with this, guys. But you can see total length is here. So you'd probably want to change the prompt a little bit just to make it a bit better. Does it say reviews here? Yeah, reviews and ratings. Okay, so yeah, it, it, it is the same. So what we can do now is we can now generate a website based on this scraped information. Now, I'm not gonna do that in this video. We will leave that for another video, but you can see just how powerful this is because now if I just go back here and I say, uh, write me a script to check. Actually, we don't even have to do that. We can go here and we can press copy on this button here and then docs.new and then paste like that. Okay, guys, so let's see what we can do with uh, what we've got here. So I'm just going to open up cursor here and uh, we'll do a new uh, whatever the hell that was. I was supposed to press a new folder, but I pressed something else. Folder. Again, please, please ignore my file names. Uh, we'll do terminal, new terminal, control K, make me a new Next.js project. And then we'll put a dot here and we'll just spam enter. And then control shift I. I'm gonna say, uh, and then Mongo DB uh, collection. Uh, there we go. This looks much better already. I can just fucking see it. The Dynamo product page, that's exactly what we want. Thank you so much. Thank you for understanding, Cursor. You're a good boy. Good job. This will just work, I guarantee it. Yeah, generate get static pads. This is totally correct. Everything here is fine. And then we'll do npm run build. There'll be a few TypeScript errors. Uh, okay, so we'll just uh, say this. Control Shift uh, fix this. Looks like we need to install some dependencies, so we'll just do that as well while we're waiting. Okay, so there's a couple of J. There's a couple of uh, what they called errors. That's fine. Fix these TypeScript errors. I just want to show this in action. For God's sake, I hate this. I always say, oh, we won't code today or whatever, and then we get stuck in this fucking loop. So. I apologize for that, guys, but I promise you it'll be worth it. I hate TypeScript. TypeScript means thrown in the bin. I, I cannot stand fucking TypeScript. Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. Yeah, we like that. Yeah. 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 Oh. Let's fucking go. And then we do npm run dev. And then we open her up. There's not going to be any errors here. There it is. So, from... A creating a universal scraper to storing it inside MongoDB to having the actual 
product here. How fucking cool is that, guys? And then this button here would be to your whoever you're affiliated with, whatever. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Obviously, this website looks absolutely trash. There's a lot to do here. But we've taken the information from uh, two men. So just before we finish, let me show you why this is so cool, okay? So let's just take some more of these products, right? And then we just go here into urls.csv, paste that here, and then grab another one. Now you're gonna understand why this is so interesting to me and why you guys should be so damn excited about this. So let's copy a few more, and then we'll run this script. So what is it, Python, hi.py, obviously, what else would it be? I'm just gonna go off the screen. So I'm gonna go off the screen there so that we don't see any um, <laughs> API keys. This video is gonna be very, very hard for my um, producer to edit, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, but you know, that it is what it is. So a couple of things, just so you know, um, first of all, this is very, very inefficiently scraping these websites. So you can do something called asyncing. So if I go back to this script here and I just say, please async the calls to make this way faster as I have really high rate limits with GPT-40 mini. Um, so I'll just present it here. Async is not spelled like that. I don't know why I keep spelling it like that, but there you go. So what asyncing does basically is it does the calls um, more than one at a time instead of one at a time. Um, but look, if we just refresh this here, we should see new data um, already. I don't know how long it takes to actually scrape one of these. No, it takes a little bit longer apparently. Uh, wait, also please remove the thing that's printing my API key as well, please lol. Uh, yeah, here we go, okay. So, okay, okay. So we've got the data here, right? So we've got three different products here. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna show you why this is so damn cool. So I'm gonna have to actually change something just because of the way uh, Claude decided to fucking call my databases something different every time. So I'm just gonna copy this here and I'm gonna manually find uh, where it's stored that information. So I believe it's in, should be in server. Oh, it's here, right. So if I just change this to this and then save, and then I'll do npm run build again. Watch this, guys. This is why I'm so fucking excited about this. Remember, you need to have a partnership with whatever company you're working with. Do not just go around stealing people's data, obviously. I'm not suggesting you should do that. And then npm run dev. Tell me what's gonna be different here. Cormac, do you know? It's gonna be more products on the same page. You're goddamn right. So we open this up, and there's gonna be more Products here, there we go. Bang, bang, bang. This is so exciting, guys. I'm super, super excited to experiment with this. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not going into too much detail here, guys. I'm just showing you what's possible, but you can create your own universal scraper. You can store all of that information as it comes into your Mongo database or whatever database you wanna use. You don't have to use Mongo. I just think Mongo is very, very beginner friendly then you can create a website that reads your MongoDB and then creates a website based on that logic. That's really, really powerful, guys. You no longer have to use external APIs or anything like that. With that, I'm gonna leave the video right there. Now, I'm not suggesting this is a website that would rank on Google. You'd need to do a lot more to this website. Like, first of all, work out why the product pages aren't working. You know, you'd have to add a lot to this website, but you can see just how powerful this actually is, okay? Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Watch this video if you want to know about the newest and strongest way of generating a website with a lot of pages and a lot of very, very good, unique content. God, I hope that video was useful.